Welcome to the live service podcast. This is weird. Um, we had a hiatus. Uh, Brian and I just got busy with life as you do. Yeah, you know, just just like a one year hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> And now, now we're here. Well, because it was weird, right? Like, um, we also want to change the format of a show a bit, which, um, essentially we're just going to make it a little shorter for ourselves so we can do it on a regular, but like COVID happened and I don't even know if I can say that without this getting demonetized, but I, I don't give a shit. Um, COVID happened and then two years later, it started like unhappening and like, it's so fucking weird because the start of COVID, your lives start to change really drastically. And then two years later, everyone's like, okay, COVID's not really a thing anymore. And then your lives start to change drastically again. Like people will deliver stuff that <laughs> to your front door now, but they expect you to come get it instead of just like, no, no, leave it there. I don't want to, I want to go back to COVID Brian, where I don't have to see or talk to people. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay. So let's rephrase that. You want to go back to, uh, some of the, uh, social aspects of it, but not the actual thing itself. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, yeah. Cause, uh, yeah, I mean, life was, I mean, I, I think there are, you know, uh, people are going to rip me apart for saying this. Oh, there oh. are positives that have come out of said situation. It was a horrible situation with lots of negatives, but there are positives that came out of it that, like, proved uh, that, you know, uh, you can have, uh, you know, you know, contactless delivery. You can work from home. Yeah. You know, most jobs don't need to go in. Things, and then, you know, the fact that, you know – we knew that before, but now that's like, you know, that's saturated. That's become part of the culture. It's become oh. accepted now when it wasn't before. Well, and that's uh, kind of what happened. Yeah, there are positive things that have come out of it. Sorry. That's kind of what happened with like my job situation is I had a remote job during COVID and then COVID went away and they're like, cool, we don't need remote jobs anymore. Can you move to Florida? And I was like, no, <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> hell <What>? no. <laughs> Fuck Florida, dude. Oh, my God. It's hot. You have drug addicts everywhere and Trump supporters that play golf all day. It's fucking terrible. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 different now. You know, my job is all online. I like write, develop content, publish stuff, run games. I still do all that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I can tell people that these days and they mm -hmm. understand it more. When in the past, they were like, what? You don't go somewhere to work? You don't, what are you, like a Twitch streamer or a YouTuber? To, and even that was weird. Dude, they, to be now, honest Now people you? can kind of understand it. Yeah, to be honest with you, like, work from home is so nice because, like, people message me and they're like, hey, whenever you're available. And I'm like, I'm available now. And they're like, well, don't you have a day job? And I'm like, yeah, I do it from home. And to be honest with you, it's nice because... I, I work really efficiently like, Oh, and there's this super fascinating study going on about work days, how, um, there's an, I, f I forget what country, but there's, it's obviously European. There's a European office that's giving people six hours, five days a week, and then eight hours, four days a week. Um, and what they saw with the six hours, five days a week is that the people that worked six hours for five days a week were 40% more productive. They got more 40% more things done than the people that worked eight hours for five days a week. And that's like, what the fuck? You know, people think that's super weird, but it's because they go to an office there. They sit down for three hours. They have a break every hour and a half. They take lunch, uh, which is usually 30 minutes to an hour. Then they have another break in an hour and a half and then they go home. And so like their work ethic is broken up into an hour and a half segments, which means they're like, Oh, Hey, I only have like an hour and a half to get this thing done. So let's go ahead and get this done now versus when you work in like a regular office job, 
you sit there for like, uh, it's three hours till my next break. Ugh. And like people just dawdle a lot and they don't do things. Um, yeah, I, th I think these, these more recent studies are discovering something we kind of knew all along, but like, oh, yeah. you know, people are different. They, they are productive in different ways. Some people are productive in like, and like spurts and bouts, some people are more productive at long-term things. But th the same work shift does not fit everybody's production style. You know, like uh, to get the best out of this employee, they may need uh, a whole different like you know schedule and 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 work style than to get the best out of this employee who may need something completely different. Uh, and these experiments are just proving that you know different you know work environments affect you know your work yeah okay here, here here's one of them um in europe the netherlands is the country where workers work the least amount of hours hang on let me put this up uh netherlands is where the workers work the least amount of hours with an average of 30.3 hours per week which is 10 hours less a week which is actually like five five and a half hour days um According to a 2021 Organization of Economic Corporation Development, uh, the OECD, Denmark came at they, they were the most productive European country. Denmark came in second as the most productive European country with 33.7 hours worked on average for full time workers, followed by Norway for 34.1. All three countries ranked in the top countries in the world for the highest levels of productivity with less hours weekly. So, like, it's just it, because it, it, it makes sense to me, because if I sit down and I know I have to do something and get it done in a short period of time. Well, and the other thing is, like, this attributes to racing because I do a lot of sim racing. Right. And um, there's a sweet spot for me where I put in my fastest lap times. I hit it the hardest. Um, I'm it's, it's where my maximum performance comes from, just like in everything. And that is usually within uh, an hour to an hour and a half. Once I start going past like an hour and a half, even when I start going to like an hour and 15 minutes, my performance starts to dip because I start to lose focus and concentration. And like I have to, you, you know, like those uh, like for uh, for for professional drivers f1 drivers that can sit there and like which I, this has come up because i just got done watching the canadian f1 grand prix f1 drivers that can like sit there for two and a half hours and do the same thing like god that's some mental fortitude and you know for them they're getting paid uh <laughs> 10 15 25 million dollars a year <laughs> for that mental fortitude Whereas an office worker, you get maybe a pizza party at the end of the six month period. <laughs> yeah, I think there's there's a lot that goes into it too because like productivity and jobs were all kind of like conformed to the same uh, mode uh, for for generations, and they really shouldn't be. You know, like a creative job is very different than like like a factory assembly job, a factory assembly job where you're just like doing this one thing over and over and over. You know, you could do that in like an eight hour shift every day or whatever, you know, and it's it's monotonous, you know, but the productivity is not really going to change because it moves as fast as like the, the line moves. Right. But with like a creative job, I've had days where like I sat down. And like started writing or designing something and just had like this burst of inspiration. And suddenly when I'm done, you know, like four hours later, I've got like 16 pages worth of really good stuff, uh, which is actually quite a lot when you consider what I do. But then the next day I sit down, I don't have that same burst of creativity. I can't just sit there for eight hours and just write another 16 pages. That's not how it works. You know, it just yeah doesn't work that way <laughs> we, speaking of which if we we need to co-opt write something at one point we really do um but that's another conversation that we we probably not have on podcast i i want to ask you a question very quickly and there's already a pre-discussed answer that we've determined about this but i'm going to ask you for it for a funny joke anyway okay okay 
I'm, I'm do you want to talk about, about Starfield? <laughs> yes and no. Yes, we want to talk about Starfield. It's not going to happen in this because there's too much to talk about. Just, we, we, we can't. Okay, so we're not talking about Starfield. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think we'll save Starfield for... Uh, 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 we might dedicate, honestly, a whole episode to Starfield closer to when it comes out or like maybe even after it comes out, um, like a week after we've played it or whatnot, because yeah, we could sit here and talk about the Starfield presentation and how Todd looks that good at 56 years old from He's the stealing- new Keanu Reeves. He he murders children and he's the new Keanu blood. Reeves, who is the new uh, Paul Rudd. You know they just they 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 don't age, and I don't he understand must. it. Also, Bethesda offices look fucking spectacular. I want to oh, visit so their good. campus. So good. And and look, we're not gonna talk about it right now, but that was we're the not most, gonna talk about that it. Was, that was I was just gonna I'm just gonna say that was the most comprehensive and in depth like gameplay deep dive in video game history we have yeah. never had something that deep it... and that detailed ever oh we can't talk about it i want to talk about it we can't talk about it okay i will say this then we're moving on it instilled a level of confidence in me that i've not gotten from previous game presentations for instance every time i see a one and a half to two minute trailer nowadays i'm just like huh this could all be cgi because Anthem was a three and a half minute or three minute trailer that was complete CGI and no one knew what that game looked like, but they showed like 25 minutes of gameplay footage. They talked about extensive different kinds of systems. I am still tempering my expectations as best as I can because it's a Bethesda game, but I am like, I want this to be my game of the year and I've played tears of the kingdom and I liked tears of the kingdom, but I want Starfield to be better. I'm still tempering the hell out of my expectations just for personal mental health. I think, you know, Bethesda is very cognizant of the gaming industry. They yes. always make the jokes, you know, play Skyrim on your refrigerator. Yes. And, you know, the adoring fan, they know. So they know the, the worries and thoughts as well. And I think that's what this presentation was showing their confidence. Cause now that they've got that Microsoft money and they can, realistically delay for a year just for polish because all signs are pointing that's what this was a year of pure polish not Pretty actual development much. so the fact that they they wanted to show off how confident they are uh but yeah, we can't we're not going to talk about starfield <laughs> <laughs> five minutes later after talking about starfield um <laughs> but you know what sucks Baldur's Gate 3, and then seven days later, Starfield comes out. Ugh! Like, I, and, I, and I thought, do I start my Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough, like, a week early then? And, and then the patch will come out, and maybe that game content will be patched in, or will it be corrupted? Or will I, like, I don't know what to do. Am I just gonna have to play Baldur's Gate for like 15 hours a day for seven days i'll do it i am uh two thoughts and i'll on this. One, be really happy about it but <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i'm of two thoughts on this one i love larry to death but they've been drawing out the Baldur's gate thing for so long that i'm just done with it until it actually releases yeah uh it, it, like seriously like uh i've already played half the game like just it's ridiculous uh, yep. And two, everything is telling me that Starfield is shaping up to be a game that I could real like, everybody makes fun of, you know, we're still playing Skyrim a decade later, you know, yep, because of mods and stuff like that. But you could play, you could be playing Starfield without mods, realistically, a few years later still, without any kind of DLC or anything, just the amount of stuff that's in it. So I, I, I just, I'm going I... into it knowing that Starfield is going to be a long-term game that I'm just gonna, you know, have to play with other games, you know, like, this is Starfield Day, this is my other game's day, because this is no other way for me to do it. I have my, oh, we can't talk about Starfield. <laughs> I'm just sitting here like, I want to talk about Starfield! Um, I have my suspicions. I don't think you'll be able to play Starfield for, like, a year, like some people are thinking. I think you're only gonna be able to play it for, like, eh, two or three months. 
But, but, um, I'd still think you're going to be able to play it for a pretty extensive period of time. Um, you also have to keep in mind when I say play it for like a year, I'm also not the person that sits down and in the first three days hits like cap level on, on Diablo three and stuff like that. I'm the guy that plays like, you know, two hours a day because I still have other things that I do. So, you know, I'm not talking about no lifing it for a year. I'm talking about average play. Got you. Yeah, no, I can see that most definitely because I played, uh, we're not going to talk about Starfield. Um, Baldur's Gate three. I look, okay. I kind of agree that they have drawn it out a lot. But I'm kind of like, they were very transparent about it. So I'm kind of okay with it. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I'm like not okay with it. I'm just kind of like done even talking about the game until it comes out. Like I've reached my, my limit of like, you know, there's, you know, we're, we're not talking about Starfield, but there's I could still talk about Starfield. I haven't reached that limit yet where I'm just like, shut up and give me the game. I have for Baldur's Gate because it's just been yeah. so long. Yeah. Well, and it's also because Bethesda has a pretty good, good like track record of announcing a game and then it comes out six months later, which is the best thing you can do as a developer. Like Oh my god, more developers need to do that. Announce their game and it comes out six months fucking later. Like when they I did that for Fallout. Yeah, it's it's as far as consumers go, yes, that is the best. Uh but the the industry has become uh like kind of like muddled. Like it used to be at like, you know, a closed door E3 thing, they could announce to like the industry that, hey, we're developing a new game and this is what's about to pull in, uh, like, you know, like talent, you know, get people to apply and things like that. But now that's a big public announcement that we hear about and then we don't get the game for five years, you know, and it feels like crap. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I hate, like, there's there's the positives of getting that more uh, insular look into the industry, but then there's the negatives like that where it's just like, you know, that wasn't really, like, people talk about, like, that State of Decay 3 trailer that was years ago, and we haven't heard anything since. And I'm like, yeah, well, that wasn't really for us. That was literally just... Investors. Them recruiting recruiting investors and developers, right? And uh, it feels like crap, because I'm excited for that game, because when you look at the difference in 1 and 2, and then 2 but from now, to, you know, compared to how it was at launch, that team is just getting better and better. So I want to see what they can do next. But at the same time, I get it. You know, I can't really hold them to that three year. So here's the other thing. So, okay. We could talk a lot about the Xbox press conference. And I I, kind of want to hit the highlights of it and kind of move on because there's so much to talk about there. But there's also so much that's really far away. Like, for instance, three years ago, we got a teaser for Fable. And last week, we got an actual trailer for Fable. And it looked like pre-baked in-game rendered cinematics. And they said it's... talk about that. So they said it's in-game footage, which just means, like, it's the in-game engine. Um, and... I actually want to talk about that. There was a guy that came out on Twitter that he was... Uh, at the time working for playground i guess he's gone now like he recently left and he was like look these are the combat animations that i made for fable like that's the actual gameplay combat animations like i could believe I, that I, 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 so it's 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 weird the way that like because some of it is actual gameplay and some of it's just like baked gameplay like you're talking yeah. about and it's just a weird mix and it's just like that's why it's hard to tell you know, uh, I, because yeah. like the w- when there's a few sections when he, she's like in the giant's house and she jumps through the fire or she throws that fireball and there's a little bit of sword play yeah, like fighting the bandits. Yeah. That stuff looks like it could be really close to what the gameplay might look like. But obviously you're in a third person pulled back perspective, which I don't think we get to see the full view of. And 
I think these are rendered to be a lot sharper than what the game or a lot better looking to be than what the game is going to be. There's also a ton of criticism, which, okay, this is going to start out bad and it'll get there. It'll be fine. Okay. <clears throat> a lot of people were saying the girl character looked really bad. Like she didn't, she just didn't look good. And my first thought was, well, I mean, she's ugly, but there are ugly people. <laughs> so like, I didn't, when they're like, she looks bad. I'm like, no, it doesn't look bad. She's just an ugly person. And sorry. I don't think she was ugly. I think she's just average. And just our perception has been warped yeah, by it, social yeah, media. It, you know, yeah, if she's it, a regular looking person. That's 100% fine. Yeah. Know? Well, she has, like, there were some exaggerated qualities that I feel it's like. a fable character. Of course we, there was. Exactly. <laughs> but the, here, here, here was the thing. In comparison to whatever that one guy is, he's from the IT crowd that was doing the voiceover introduction. Yeah, I forget his name. He's got a weird last name that I can't pronounce. It's very uh, clear that that's just like a 3D scan of him doing mocap inserted into the game. That's what that Richard, is. Richard last name I can't pronounce. That's but yeah, yeah. Um, it's very clear that that's just he's just playing himself. Like he's not vo that that's his himself in the game, right? Um, so I wonder if that model is based after a person, <laughs> in which case that woman must be crying herself to sleep right now. I, I seriously hope not. I also seriously doubt it because a staple of fable is you play your character uh, so that's the other thing really don't think they're going to change that i think that i was supposed to be an, an overly exaggerated character yeah to, to portray you know a girl or someone playing that character you know but my problem with that is if our character and maybe some other characters are going to be overly exaggerated but then like these main villains like jack and the giant beanstalk and he's the giant right if some of these villains are going to though? be well i mean you know you know what i mean right like no no no. i think a lot of people miss part of that thing the, the the farmer and the hero are standing beside a giant pumpkin and also that guy who is then a giant in the end i don't think he's giant i think we get made small i think people are misinterpreting they made it oh look like the, really yeah if you watch in that in that scene with the giant pumpkins he's standing there and is the same height as her or maybe we get made or maybe he gets made big because yeah, something's then... going on. It's not. It's not like what everybody's thinking. I think that that you know the trailer was meant to portray that theme and get you thinking along those lines. But it's also yeah. it's something different to like throw you off some. Maybe it is their own take. I, I I'm pretty okay with them doing their own. Uh, oh oh shit! You're right. He is, yeah, I'm staring at the trailer right now. He is standing, talking to a farmer and there are these giant ass pumpkins and he's standing beside your character and he's the same size as your character. Yep. I saw it. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, and you know, it, it is fable. So it does pull from fairy tales and fables and things like that. So I'm sure they're just, you know, they want to, uh, you know, instill that that feeling of that story, but there's going to be a twist to it. I uh, would and they're, love... they're already teasing that in the trailer. I would love... Well, and it's this is Playground's own reboot of Fable. I would love if everything that they did was like, here's our rift on this fairy tale, or this fairy tale, and this fairy tale. And there's a bunch of those scattered out, but I'd also like to see some... Uh, some original story in there, which is, I think what was most concerning about me is that this didn't look original to me. This just looked like a rift on a fairy tale. And I thought fables like original storylines in and one, two and three were all relatively interesting. And I think that's part of what separated them so well. I a hundred percent agree. So I, I'm a little concerned that they might just be, um, riffing on other fairy tales uh as their plot devices like that's eh. 
Yeah, and then going back to the like the gameplay or baked in gameplay thing, I think I think we have to be realistic and that could be actual gameplay now just put into a trailer and made to look more pretty. That doesn't mean that's what it's gonna be like at completion when, when they yeah, finish the game. That's that true. could be real right now and then things have to change between now and and you know, shipping of the game. But I think it also does show that a lot of people aren't remembering that this is the same engine those insane graphics and everything from Forza are coming from, and you're really seeing the power of this thing that they built. A lot of people don't that's recognize. A lot true. of people thought it was all baked in and no gameplay whatsoever, uh, and I think that's kind of telling of the power of the engine, and it's just like, wow, this might be one of the things that really pushes this generation. Because let's be Forza's... honest, there's, a, there's barely been a lot that's pushed this generation yet. Look it's very easy to make a racing game pretty racing games tend to be some of the prettiest games out there but playground and uh the other studio that are working on the forza games have taken that engine and developed all kinds of really cool rendering tech specifically for racing with how they render the tracks in stupid high fidelity with a bunch of really high depth physics models going on i mean and also, if you look at, like, the new Forza Horizon, the environment the, the, that you actually get to, like, get out of your car and go to and stuff like that as well, like, they've – there's some big advancement. It's, it isn't just the car and the tracks anymore. Like, this this engine's, yeah. like, insane. It's – and there's – if you scale it down and you aren't traveling at 250 miles an hour in a supercar, there's probably some really cool things they can do with the rendering tech that they have. So – it's really going to come down to is how does the engine handle combat physics that and the yes. feel of it. That's really what's going to come down to. Speaking of, uh, we, we could talk about avowed. I kind of don't want to, because I've seen what I'm expecting from that game. Avowed is just going to be the outer wilds, but worlds. Or yeah, the outer the outer worlds, uh, in a fantasy twist on it in the world of, um, pillars of eternity. Pillars of eternity, um, and they've already talked about like it's not going to be as big as Skyrim or anything like that. It's going to be more comparable to the outer worlds, but it's going to have depth to it, which I'm perfectly okay with. That I played the outer worlds for like. 45 55 hours and made yeah. a bunch of really cool choices and i love that game it's fantastic it was in the discussion for my game of the year i'm really okay with avowed doing that uh, yeah i've seen people complaining because the 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 graphics and tone are off from the original like teaser thing which was just you know but i actually think this is better because like this is what obsidian is good at that more like like photorealistic darker whatever tone everybody was talking about the original that's not what they're known for not what they're good at so it always had me worried the fact that they've you know adapted avowed to this i i know i'm gonna get something quality from them yeah and also on that note like there's still some really dark stuff in the outer worlds <laughs> like there's yeah. some fucked up brutal shit in the outer worlds um and uh and sorry i i just looked up it took me about 20 25 hours to beat the outer worlds i uh i hope that um that avowed takes me closer to like 60 hours 70 hours um i do want there to be a lot of like depth in that there's man which okay for both fable and avowed uh we didn't get a date or we did get 2024 for a, a vowed i think yeah it said 2024 for about so we didn't get a year, year for fable yeah i don't expect it until 2025 which is like really curious because it's like okay you gave us a teaser three years ago which means you had already started working on it three years ago so have they been working on Fable for like four years and we're still not going to get it till 2025? Yeah, I think that teaser from three years ago was kind of what we were just talking about where uh, a little while ago where it's it's it was meant more for the industry than us. 
God, yeah, but it's still, it's like, okay, so this game's been in development for five to six years at this point. Like, either you're in development hell, or you're shooting for the stars with a really big game. I hope uh, it's the I, latter. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's either. I think it's, it's, we've got a lot of great tech and a great engine, but we're also learning to make an entirely new kind of, kind of game out of it. And we're just taking the time needed to do so properly. I don't know if I'd call that development hell rather than, you know, actually what I'd want to see, you know, actually take the time to adapt it and make it properly rather than forcing it to fit. And then you turn it into Anthem, which, you know, True. that engine didn't fit. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, last thing I really want to talk about. I hope. Sorry. Yeah, no. Um, last thing I really want to talk about that came out of Xbox uh is uh what's it called uh clockwork revolution oh yeah clockwork revolution looks so good from nxl so nxl so nxl are the people that made uh wasteland 3 which is a rpg and a lot yeah, of people saw this Bard's game tale uh if yes. you're into stuff like Baldur's gate torment tides of uh numenera is a great game uh but sorry go ahead um a lot of people looked at this game and they were like, oh, Bioshock, which I don't think that's a bad thing, but um, a lot of people were like concerned that that it was just a first person shooter, which is not what In Exile is known for. They're known for uh, RPGs. And they had they came out later on Twitter and said there are RPG elements inside Clockwork Revolution, uh, just like there are inside uh, our previous games like Wasteland Three, which yeah they said it's, they're calling it a first person RPG. Yes, which is cool, but also like I I, I I'm a little I'll have to see it um to believe you know i it, it's just it's I mean, interesting it could be i mean we've had other first person rpgs i mean we just uh, about our worlds fallout stuff like that i want to yeah. see how deep they go into the rpg elements uh, so i want to see yes. how deep this this time travel and changing you know the past yes. and future elements is uh so yeah it's and yeah i think the bioshock i look I, I I'm, like I'm okay with the Bioshock comparison. I think it's no, great. I think it's, I think it's 100 percent on purpose. If you actually go back and watch like the original Bioshock uh, trailer and then watch this one, like that was on purpose. They 100 yeah, percent crafted probably. this trailer to give you a Bioshock feel. Uh, yeah, I could totally see it. It, lo I, I think it, I think it's fine. I think it looks great. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the highlights of the things that I'm interested. in. I will go ahead and I'll show it on screen now just to go over like we're not going to talk about everything at the Xbox showcase. Um, Starfield, we're not going to talk about it. Forza Motorsport, that's a, a high-end racing game. I hope it does well. I hope it's competitive with things like iRacing in terms of sim. I don't think it will be, blah, blah, blah. Um, Sinua Saga, Hellblade 2, still didn't get a date on that. So 2025, question mark? <laughs> um I, I think it's gonna be next year i just don't think they wanted to confirm it dude they are taking for fucking ever with that game like don't get me wrong i think it'll be cool when it gets here but like stop being a cock tease about it um <laughs> fable 2025 avowed 2024 uh no one cares about the elder scrolls i don't remember T towerborn looked uninteresting to me clockwork revolutions 2024 path of the goddess was a weird ass capcom looking lsd trip I don't remember Metaphor. South of Midnight is Metaphor a... is the Persona Three or Persona Studio making a oh, new IP. Oh, okay. Still don't and care. South of Midnight is Compulsion. <laughs> I want yes. to point out. I want to point out that everybody's been talking about Xbox Baltic Studios and they haven't done anything forever. And two of the big studios were Compulsion and Ex and Exile. Yeah. These are these are the first games these two studios are doing under Xbox. Yes. And they're very different styles of games than what yes. they're known for. So it's like Xbox is allowing them to really stretch their legs. Yes. I seriously hope it works out because in the past the Xbox's very hands-off approach has kind of fucked them, you know. <laughs> like, uh, Redfall, so. smile. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, we could talk about that in a second, but um so yeah, 
metaphor, the persona. I'm not interested in the persona stuff. So uh, the South of Midnight is supposed to be a southern, uh, like monster hunter, uh, voodoo type shit, like based in Louisiana swamps or whatever. I think that's cool. Star Wars Outlaws isn't really Xbox. That was more Yubi that showed it first at the Xbox conference. I thought that looked okay. Um, I want to see actual gameplay, not that canned vertical, very clear canned vertical slice that we saw. Because, like, for people that are like, oh, that was actual gameplay. Yes, but Ubisoft has been very well known in the past to do canned vertical slices. Um, uh, Watch Dogs, Rainbow Six Siege, Watch Dogs 2, uh, Watch Dogs whatever, the, the, the Legion one, uh, <laughs> Splinter Cell. Uh, and so to think that they're not doing a, a big canned vertical slice again... They're doing it. It's, they just are, okay? So I want to see actual gameplay of that. Am I going to have to climb 47 Rebel Towers to clear the maps on every single planet? Fuck that no, that's, shit. That's, that's that's Avatar, which is literally Far Cry in, in Avatar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I they, they could do it in Outlaws, too. But, yeah, everyone that's like, oh, Avatar. Avatar looks good. And I'm like, you mean Far Cry 7? But, okay. Um, I mean, it, it could still be great. Let's be honest. Far Cry's been amazing games before, but it, like, it's 100%. Okay, one hundred percent Far Cry and on an alien planet. You want my you want my uh, uh, controversial opinion? Far Cry stopped being okay after number four, and since then it's just been mediocre. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much contempt in that. Okay, Brian. No, I, I'm. It's not contempt. It's. It's. <sighs> <laughs> it's uh, how do i say this uh -huh. i agree and disagree at the same time okay i agree on a large scale of like far cry hasn't been like a game changer in a long time mm -hmm. i think there are parts of some of the newer far cries that are really good and really impressive yeah uh, but it, it's it's not enough for the whole game like I, I kind of agree that the whole game put together the whole package was just okay agree um Okay, so yada yada yada. That looks fine, fine, fine. Um, Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. I think we can talk about this for a minute, but I want to get through the rest of this list because I do actually want to talk about Phantom Liberty a bit. Um, then let's see. Uh, Payday 3 was a surprise announcement. Again, not Microsoft specifically, but I'm super looking forward to it. 33 Immortals. 33 yes. player co-op indie game looked neat as fuck. Um, the flight simulator stuff where you can rescue people actually looks cool as fuck where you have, j you have jobs with vehicles. And I'm like, are you telling me I can crop dust a children's playground with toxic? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guns. Uh, the thing about that, a lot of people aren't realizing, that's not a flight simulator later update. That's the new flight simulator they're coming out with. Yeah. This is the next game, uh, and it's basically taking the successes of the last Microsoft Flight Sim, which was a technical marvel, and just adding on to it and giving you more actual like game to it. Uh, yes. Before, it was, it was way more sim. Uh, and it was great, but this is adding some game into that sim as well. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think it's brilliant. I think what they're I, doing is brilliant. And it's for the people who like this, it is, it was mind blowing. I'm going to, cause I, I'm, I'm, I've wanted to build a sim setup for flying specifically for games like star citizen and elite dangerous. Cause in 10 years when star citizen might be in a beta state, it'll be crazy <laughs> fun to play and having a big setup for it will be kind of worth it. And I think having that set up and playing flight sim games with it too will also be really cool. So I kind of want to do that. St like, you know, but anyway, um, the monkey Island sea of thieves stuff look neat. Who cares about fallout 76 cities skylines two. Oh, I'm so, I'm so I ready for screamed it. like, look, there's all kinds of, I was expecting F fable was on my list. Avowed was on my list of things I wanted to see. So was Forza. Starfield, obviously. Sinewa Saga, obviously. Maybe a Star Wars game. Uh, may, let's see what an Exile's up to. And, and you know, not in a million years did I think City Skyline 3 would show up and I was screaming, Brian. 
I, I wasn't screaming because I had heard that City Skyline 2 was, you know, being made and we were going to get it. I did not expect to see it at the showcase, though. So as soon as it popped up, I was like, oh, oh, my God. Yeah. Or <laughs> so, yeah. or how early we were getting it. We're getting it this year. Um, Are we getting it this year? Yes. So when let me hang oh, on, hang on. it hand. said it said October 24. And I, I was confused. Does that mean October 24th or October yes. of next year? October 24th. Okay. Because I was confused. I was like, wait, which one does that mean? Because you can interpret it both ways. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Let me see. Cities Skyline 2 release date. October 24th, 2023. Uh, Okay. All right. Good, good. Because I was, like I said, they they didn't put like a, they just said October and 24. And I was like, that could be interpreted two ways. Which one is it? Please tell me. Come on. It looks so cool i am so ready for this um yeah i've played uh i mean i mean i've probably put a hundred hours or more into the first one which is really bad but yeah it's so <laughs> like I, when i watched this trailer i was like i could go build me a city right now guys like we could go you want to simulate downtown chicago because we could fucking do it <laughs> That game is, I love it and it's I hate it at crack. the same time. Because I'll log in, like, I, I'll get in, you know, I remember playing the first one uh, when they remastered it and I'd get on and I'd be like, all right, I just want to, like, do this thing for my city today. That was my plan. And then I look up and it's like three hours later and I'm like, what the fuck? Well, and then I saw <laughs> stuff like they have apartment buildings that you can build that have, like, pools extended out to them on balconies and stuff like that. So I wonder how in-depth it's going to let us get into the building layouts of things because something that fucked me up recently that I got to play was um, a house flipper. Uh, and I was playing it and I'm like, this is going to be stupid. But dude, getting in there and deciding what wall color you want and where to put the furniture and new appliances and designing the bathroom. And I'm like, oh, oh, no. Hey, hey guns. Yeah. We're not going to talk about it. But Starfield's got you covered on that. I know. <laughs> dude, the ship design in Starfield looks so good. Right. Uh, but yeah, talking about this, like I was impressed by it also like, you know, like, I, I loved the first City Skylines, especially the remastered yes. version, right? Yes, yes, but yes. But like yes, drawing yes. out my proper like 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 districts and blocks and stuff was so annoying. And it looks like they've added like little templates that I can like build my roads like a uh, you know block by block to end. Uh, little things like that excite me, you know. Yes. Like like bridge and and connection templates and and, and oh just oh. Um. Then there was some a bunch of other stuff, Persona 3, blah, 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 and other Persona stuff. Uh, the Like Dragon, which is Yakuza 8, technically, um, for those interested. I've never played the Yakuza games. Maybe I should. Uh, Overwatch 2 announcement stuff. Who fucking cares? Um, Blizzard can suck my nuts. Uh, Still Takes the Deep, which is a horror game based on an oil rig from the team that made uh, Amnesia the Dark Descent. Um, yeah, a lot of people were confused, but I was like, as soon as they said the Chinese room, I was like, oh, okay, I know what this is, horror game. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's going to be a shorter horror experience that's probably going to be pretty amazing. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, then there was Dungeons of Hinterberg and Jusson. Um I'm really, the, the guys that made Amnesia the Dark Descent and, uh, you know, all that, uh, it's nice to see them moving on from Amnesia because I was very concerned that, like, they were just going to get stuck in this. Uh, hey, guys, Amnesia 37, <sighs> uh, which nobody wants to see a developer do. Um, I think the most I can tolerate out of any kind of IP is a trilogy. I think that's as far as it needs to go, unless we're doing something with like Fallout and Elder Scrolls where like the games aren't directly cor- connected. The reason why oh, and GTA GTA does this really well. Um, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, and GTA change locations and time completely. They go, they they move forward decades to centuries, forward or backwards in the, the past or the future, you know, in their fictional respective worlds, right? And they change locations by thousands of miles to the other sides of the worlds or continents 
so that it looks nothing alike and it gives them a ton of creative freedom and it feels like it could be an entirely new IP each time, right? Which is yeah. why I think Fallout, Elder Scrolls, and GTA work. Like if you go look at GTA 4 to 5, there are similarities because they're the same game in terms of mechanics, but Liberty City acts and functions completely differently with completely different characters and storyline. It's it's an original story just based in a world. That's why those work. Compared GTA 2 to 3, they're completely different types of games. Oh my god, yeah, exactly, right? And you can like see that down. evolution in yeah. the games. And to be fair, I, I, I think we both hate Fallout 76, right? Uh... Uh, at launch yes i think it has improved and it's worth saying that it's improved it's sure. not great but yeah, yeah it's not great um but it's not that i don't think a game like fallout 76 can't work it's closer to what i wanted out of the elder scrolls online um so for instance the elder scrolls online came out i wanted elder scrolls online i didn't want the MMO in the Elder Scrolls world, which is what that is. Fallout 76 is closer to what I wanted from the Elder Scrolls Online than, you know, what Fallout 76 is. Uh, and and so I applaud them for that. I think they just ruined a lot of aspects about the game to start with. Um, So I think a game like that could work. Maybe we'll get... With everything that they've learned from Fallout 76... I would hope that we get an Elder Scrolls conquest that functions kind of similarly, and I would play the fuck out of that. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know. I think I think they have their experiment into online, and like Fallout 76, like I said, it's improved, and it's still ongoing. People still play it. It still makes a lot of money. Yes. Same for Elder Scrolls Online. I think they're going to stick with those, and everything we're going to have going forward, at least for the next decade or so, is going to be just single-player experiences. And if you want the online, you have those, and they'll continue to expand them. And then the last I thing I want to talk about before we talk about our own stuff and kind of close out for this week is Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. Oh, oh wait, wait. Before we get to that, 30 seconds, Nick Cage. Just, that's all I gotta say. You know, <laughs> I'm actually just gonna leave it alone. I'm not even gonna. We're gonna move on because, yeah. Um. Okay, so here's the weird thing. It's a big DLC. It's a big DLC for Cyberpunk, but they're, they're being real cagey about it too. Yeah. Okay, so Skill Up, I Skill Up talked about that. There's a bunch of people that actually talked about this. There are a ton of base improvements to the game. There are a ton of improvements to the base game that will come out in a mega patch without you buying the DLC when this DLC comes out. They're not talking about those. They just wanted to talk about the DLC today. And I don't understand why, because people would care about those free base improvements more than this DLC, but all their marketing focus was on this DLC. I think it's because to them it makes sense. They want to try to make it sell as much as possible. But to learn that all these base improvements are coming has me very excited for this. Yeah, it sounds like the game itself is almost going to be not completely different, but like, I don't know, compared like No Man's Sky today to what it was at launch, you know, like yes. vastly improved. And then they don't want to talk about that for some reason. And then what they do want to talk about, they, they are still like really cagey about like they, they were going around asking people that were like invited to their event. Like, Hey, what are you expecting this, this DLC to be? You know what I mean? Uh, like lengthwise. And people were like 15 to 20 hours or something. And then the person was like, huh, cool. And then just didn't comment. Like, what, what, what kind of question is that? How so many hours is it? What the it, fuck are you doing? It, what? If I know anything about CDPR, um, this DLC is probably going to be like 40 to 50 hours. Because Blood and Wine was the big capstone DLC for The Witcher 3, and it was like 40 to 50 hours. It was the whole second half chunk of the game, and in my opinion, Blood... You've played through Blood and Wine, haven't you? Yes. So, in my opinion, I played through The Witcher 3 in about 70 hours, and then I spent another 40 to 50 hours in Blood and Wine. My, my playthrough is about 120 hours total. 
and the best part of the game was Blood and Wine. Um, and I feel like Blood and Wine put a big capstone at the end of the game and made it feel like a complete experience. If I'd played The Witcher 3 when it came out and it ended there where it did, it would have been incredibly disappointing for me. To did have you play it when it came out? Because no, I didn't. Don't seem to forget that that game was that game was almost Fallout 76 when it came out. <laughs> yeah, I didn't play it when it came out. And looking back, like if I had gotten and beat the end of that game and then that was it, I'd have been really disappointed in The Witcher 3, but I played it when the Blood and Wine DLC came out and so I had this full complete experience. And so that's what I'm looking at when I look at Phantom Liberty. I'm like, "Oh, this is them capstoning the experience. This is them putting it from head to tail because I didn't hate the ending to to Cyberpunk 2077. I thought the ending was fine. There's like four or five different endings and I thought they were all okay because there were choices you could make along the way to get there. I thought it was all the in-between bits and the lack of delivering that m was Cyberpunk's problem all along the way, you know? Yeah, and they, I, I think it was they they advertised a lot on uh, running on a, like a high end PC and implied yep. that, that that it could be ran that way on a console, and even the new consoles couldn't run it that way, and the old consoles could barely even fucking process it. So that was a big problem. And uh, that was I the thing I, is, I was playing on a high end PC too, so like I didn't experience a lot of those issues. I had some bugs here and there, but nothing that was ever game breaking for me. So my experience of cyberpunk was like a seven and a half to an eight out of 10. Yeah. I think, I think you're right in the sense that it's still weird that they're going around asking people these questions and then not commenting. And that, that probably gets people talking. I think you're right in the sense that the entire experience is going to be very large. I think maybe the main story is not going to be that big, maybe like eight to 10 hours. Yeah. I, I've also heard like people who got to play a little bit of it. You can at the beginning answer a question uh in a way that basically ends the main story for you right there like you just opt yep. out of the dlc story but there's still all the other new stuff in the new area you can still do uh which i think is kind of wild that they just like you know mission failed game over you don't do that on this playthrough they, they allow that you know uh, yeah but i I'll also show some confidence that there's enough left in that expansion that's not main story that they're okay with you making that decision like there has to be right well and it's 30 dollars, which i think is pretty i thought it was going to be 40 um so i think the 30 dollars is pretty reasonable and here's some features that i know are coming and there's apparently more but again they aren't talking about them right now uh revamped entire skill tree for every skill so every like your cool, your street cred, your all that shit, all that's or cyber hacker, you know, blades, uh, gunmen, whatever. All of those skill trees are being revamped completely ground up, which is like, uh, uh, that's pretty fucking big. Um, there is car combat now, which is like, oh, OK, that's kind of fucking big, too. They've revamped the police system so that it works like a GTA star system now. And when you get to five stars, Max Tack comes after you in like floating ships. And then if you kill them all off, you get a big reward at the end of it and your star level goes down. Yeah, Is, is it a revamp or is it like a re remake? Because the way they described it is they basically like made a whole new like police system for this new new dlc expansion and then they like applied that to the rest of the game they're like this works so, better let's do it yes. this way for the rest of the game so it, it, they they are definitely taking components of the police system and incorporating it into the new one to make it better because the police system sucked in that cops just popped out of nowhere whenever you committed crimes now it seems like you commit a crime and the cops take a minute to get to you because they actually travel to your location. And then if you kill more cops, your, your wanted level goes up more. And so it, it, it has more of a slow drip kind of effect that makes it more believable and more, uh, liked, I should say more, more enjoyable instead of just like, Oh, Hey, here's some cops that shoot you in the head and you're dead now. Um, they just spawn, you know, so stuff like that. So, it's not a complete reinvention. It is, like you said, more of a rework to improve the system that was there. Which, again, that's really all of what a lot of the systems in this game needed. It's like the initial idea was there. They just needed improvements. For instance, there's cool new combat features for, like, swords and shit. 
where you can deflect bullets while blocking and sprinting at the same time, and you can ram into people and do damage. There's air dashing now, which wasn't in the base game. Um, there's I I. I I'm, I'm, I don't want to say specifically what it is because I'll, I'll fuck it up and misrepresent it. There's some kind of new finishing with melee weapons too. Um, I didn't get to read the full thing or I don't remember it completely, but it has something to do with like doing certain amounts of damage and how you finish characters. Um, and I imagine that that's probably prudent through more places in the game. So like, oh yeah, armor values are now tied to your cyberware and your clothing system is just clothing. So like all your stats and everything like that are applied to you when you go to the Ripper dock instead of your clothes, which is like, that's exactly what it should have been in the first. I can wear whatever fucking clothes I want and all my, cause the clothes were just that like, it didn't make sense for this clothing piece to be a Kevlar based fancy glitter suit. No, you have Kevlar ingrained skin because you're a fucking cyborg. Give me a break. Right. Um, which is apparently what that is now. So yeah, there's a lot of reworks of systems that I think are vastly improved and I'm really looking forward to it. This is going to be probably my big redemption story of the year, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are saying that's already happened, that it's already been fixed with patches and everything like that, but a lot of people didn't go back and check it out. It was only like the diehards. Yes. So I think this is this is their chance to like do it for for the uh for the masses the way like no man's sky did or something i like so. purposely did not i played the game within the first week and beat it and a month later they said you know we are going to make improvements to the game and i said okay let me know when you do right like and then a year later there was rumors that there was going to be a big dlc and fixes and that they were going to fix the cop system and i said okay i'm going to do another playthrough after that happens here it is so yeah i'm i have not played since its release i'm very excited to get back into it um i'm hoping to build a new system in the next couple months or so so i'd love to get a big fat 4080 and put you know ray trait and just fucking crank it and I'll make it pretty because this game is environmentally and artistically this game's still fucking gorgeous Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, I'm I'm curious if there's gonna be any. Uh, I don't want to say this. Oh, say I, I'm curious if there's any in improvements. Maybe not improvements, but uh, further development in that area, uh, because it's still, you know, you still need a pretty beasty machine to run it yeah. really good. Uh, and I wonder if if part of this comes with some more uh, uh, optimization, especially for the consoles. You know, I guess we'll see. Are playing it on console. Well, was there anything else you want to talk about, Brian? Nicholas Cage. No, I'm just playing. I'm just fucking with you. That was so I weird, fucking... wasn't it? It was weird. Right? It was, I, I'm not the only one who thought it was weird, right? He seemed so genuine, it was concerning. Right? I was just like, I can't tell if this is real or not, because he's an actor. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually yeah. a good actor. That was he's the moment you were like, actor. oh, Nicolas Cage really is a really good fucking actor, because I don't know. It's uh, like right? he actually <laughs> plays video games. I don't understand. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was wild. Help me. Uh, it's been it's been a crazy few weeks for gaming. Crazy, uh, dude! This year or, is so stacked. And, and yeah, the rest of this year is lined up to be, uh, pretty like, I mean, no matter what happens, it's it's gonna be wild, you know? Yeah. Like, well, yeah, uh, this is gonna be. <laughs> have you played Tears of the Kingdom? I don't want to get into a full discussion about it, but you know, I have. Yes, I have, and I have opinions. So I. I uh, okay. Yeah. Opi it's a great game if you um, run it at 60 FPS with the magical means. Um, I think it's horrible and badly limited by console technology if you're, if you're on the Switch. And I think it really neuters the game experience, honestly. Um, I thought it was great at 60 FPS at, at 1440p. Um, 
I thought it was fucking terrible on the Switch, and it 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 was it was it gave me a headache. It was horrible. I couldn't play it, but it was great otherwise. Um, when I wasn't playing it on the Switch, I to me, I want to preface this to Ooh. me of saying to me because I know what makes a Zelda game is different for everybody. I think it's a great game. I think it's far from a perfect ten out of ten that everybody was getting it. Yeah, and I think the cult of Nintendo is really fucked up. Agree. Uh, because I have many flaws I can point out in that game. Still a great game. But to me, it's a it's a great game. It's a crappy Zelda game. To me. I 100%. This is the best non-Zelda game Nintendo's ever made. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, I think it's a strong 8 or a low 9 out of 10. I don't think it's perfect by any stretch you of the imagination. You want to ask me the best Zelda game that has come out in, like, the last... Even since Wind Breath, Waker. before Breath of the Wild. Wind Waker. The best Zelda game that has come Wind out in, in the current generation. I'm not Wind talking Waker. about ever. I'm talking about the current generation was Tunic. Not oh, yeah. Game. Tunic's really good. You should go play Tunic. Okay. It's an actual Zelda game, though. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. It's, yeah, Tunic's, Tunic's really good. Um, God damn. Okay. Uh, but I don't... If Starfield and Baldur's Gate 3 deliver... I don't. Oh, and Armored Core Six. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot that's in there too. Yeah, and the new Armored Core. Everybody's getting so ready for that. I saw people like, "Well, it's time to relearn the Armored Core controls, where you hold your controller backwards." <laughs> um, if if those games deliver like I am expecting them to, I don't think Breath or uh, Tears of the Kingdom is in my running for Game of the Year. I might give it like adventure game of the year or something like that, which is our game of the year show we'll discuss, which is absolutely coming back this year. Smile. Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest. If Starfield delivers like that showcase showed, I feel sorry for every other game that came out this year. I does not stand a chance. I do too. And I, I hope that Starfield fucking kicks the shit out of Zelda at the game awards and wins game of the year just because this is probably Todd's last original IP he's ever going to put out. The man deserves it. He deserves to walk on that stage and take that. Cause like he was kind of feels like his magnum opus or something. You know what I mean? He like, was talking in that interview and it made me sad because he goes, yeah, you know, you got to think about how many games you got left in you. And he's like, I've got this one. And maybe like, maybe one more and if i'm lucky a fallout after that and that's probably it yeah, and i was about like the next elder scrolls is most likely his last elder scrolls ever and i was just like i <laughs> know <laughs> well, and if he if he doesn't retire after elder scrolls then that fallout fallout 5 that's going to be it for him yeah that'll be his last game ever so it's like, either going to be elder scrolls two. or fallout 5 that's it for him yeah it's yeah it's uh and to think about, like, you can't discredit the legacy that this man's work has left behind. M Morrowind gave us the action-adventure RPG so many games copy today that we yearn for a good one. Why is everybody so excited when a new Elder Scrolls game comes out? It's because there's so few high-quality action-adventure RPG games that come out. The only other one that comes close into contention that I can think of is Dragon Age games which are their own kind of unique style and flavor. Um, and I think fables kind of sort of were in that realm back in the day, but there's like nothing else that's in that name, something else that's in that realm of high fantasy action RPG. Yeah, I saw, I saw, what was it game spot or one of them? The one with Lucy James on it. They were talking about it. And one of the guys on there was talking about like, this feels like Bethesda's like, like this is what us sets us apart from you moment and not in like an arrogant way in a way that like for a long time bethesda put out a game and other developers looked up to their games and was like we want to be like that and they you know expanded the genre trying to be like those games and this feels like their moment for that again because fallout 4 was great but it didn't really do that yeah the writing was really poor. Six, you know what i mean but, so they haven't done that for a while they used to do that almost every single game and they haven't done that for a while this feels like them doing that again like setting yeah. that standard again like changing the landscape again well and because so Morwin, i think did that very clearly it just wasn't as popular Morwin was like the cult classic of them doing that right 
And then Oblivion yes. was them doing that and everybody recognizing it on Xbox 360, right? And then Skyrim was them doing that and the world realizing it. Right? That was the different levels of the the uh the 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 the, the occultism, the, the fanaticism that they got. Like this was a cult classic, then this was like the general gamer population, and then Skyrim was the world realizing what they do. And then Fallout 4 was like the stifled expectations of what they wanted it to be. You know, like the writing was just not there. And I think Fallout that's usually... Fallout 4 was, was good when you compare it to Fallout 3, like the advancements that they made and everything. Sure, but, but not it, to it, New it, Vegas. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't game-changing in the way that like skyrim was you know exactly what I mean? it, was just like, it was just like the the fallout version of skyrim uh, but this yeah. is the this is them being game changing again like i said like like I, i've heard other people call this not game of the year but game of the generation and if they pull yeah. it off i can believe it which this, makes just, me yeah. like which makes me scratch my head going okay so i don't want to talk about this a ton because like we're you know running a little over on time yeah um this is Starfield's going to be another one of those genre defining moments for Bethesda. We have a minimum of probably six years until Elder Scrolls. So six years from now, what are your expectations for Elder Scrolls six? And I just went, Oh God. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, just, uh, yeah, we're in, we're in that, uh, we're in that change period again. Yeah. Gaming goes through these periods of like, like change and 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 redefining of what you know gaming is and then like you know these longer periods afterwards of like you know the great stuff coming out but it's all kind of like building off what came before we're getting into that 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 scene again of we're in that that change period uh and i think tears of the kingdom is part of that like it really did you know a lot i think it's going to be overshadowed by starfield which which maybe uh, games are a lot bigger these days but maybe like maybe elder scrolls 6 doesn't take as long because skyrim was their big engine iteration change remember we went oblivion and then i think we had some fallouts and then we had skyrim and skyrim was their big engine generation shift that was all their new tech right and then four years later, we got Fallout 4, which nobody fucking expected it four years later. So, like, reasonably, do you think we can expect the next Elder Scrolls? Maybe not in four years. Like, that's obviously four years is the very short, like, port of, but maybe in, like, five to six years, we can expect the next Elder Scrolls. Because they're all the new technology that they're going to be using in it may be improved a little bit, but it's already there inside Starfield. Yeah, it could be. I I hope it's better than you know. You're you're saying you know. In this comparison, Starfield would be the Skyrim, and Elder Scrolls Six would be the Fallout Four. I hope it's better than the Fallout Four. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, even still, Fallout Four was a great game, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah. I I don't, and the way they're talking about supporting Starfield, I don't know. I think I think it's gonna be long on the longer side. If you and. and they have a collector's edition that i really want i i want to know how sm so the collector's edition is a smart watch and i want to know how smart is that smart watch like is this like a samsung smart watch shoved into a starfield casing with like some starfield theming because if it is i'll totally fucking buy it yeah i don't have all the details yet someone did release some stuff where it has its own custom things where it actually show you like like yeah barometric pressure like real stuff that the watch shows you but then it also has the connections with your phone and they didn't show that part yeah i want to know how exactly right because yeah, if it's i mean it's still cool if it's its own bespoke stuff but it's not 300 dollars cool <laughs> <laughs> if it is like a samsung smartwatch, even if it's like the base version that might be 300 dollars cool yeah um, i i honestly like the watch i definitely i especially if it's the samsung style uh, but I, I really want it, maybe not $300 want it, but I really want it for the case and the patch. I'm a patch guy. I like patches like yeah, that yep. from when I was in the military, I have Stargate ones and other things. Oh, that, Stargate. That whole, theme, that whole theme of them, uh, like all of the skills and stuff being like patches like that. Oh, it just speaks to me. Dude, so there was much. other weird thing. And 
we're not going to get into this, but I, I want to mention it in passing before we, we, as we exit, a lot yeah. of people are like, Oh, it doesn't look that good. And I'm like, okay, may I now present to you battle bit remastered a game that looks like Robux, but is clearly better than battlefield 2042 every single way. Please tell me how graphics matter. Fuck off. Yeah. I mean, it looks good enough. That's what counts. Yes. Uh, but hey, guys, we're not going to talk about Starfield. <laughs> we're not going to talk about Starfield. Um, and uh, Battle Bit Remastered is the best Battlefield game in the last decade. You should go play it. It's only $15. Support those developers. They're fucking geniuses. Um, my only complaint is I wish it did look a little bit better than Roblox, but it's tolerable and very fun. So go play it um anything you want to say in passing as we as we walk out the door here uh nah i mean i i we had a good discussion we didn't talk about starfield at all we kept to our plan we're amazing <laughs> at that uh so yeah i think successful podcast guys did you have you played diablo 4 do you like it yeah your name um, up or down on a scale of one to ten right now yay yeah uh, on a scale of one to ten, I haven't played everything. I'd give it a seven. Cool. We'll talk about it next week on the Live Service Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Guns Games. You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash guns games and kick dot uh what's what's kick dot we on that kick stream now, huh? We on uh kick.com forward slash guns games because Twitch is slowly dry. We didn't even get to talk about the Twitch news. Next oh week. my Next god. Week. Next week. Next week, we can't talk about everything in one week. It's just not possible anymore. You can follow Brian at S E V E N Bit Brian on. Is that it now? It's the seven Bit Brian spelled out on Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, it's the number seven, and on uh, YouTube, it's the number seven. On Twitch, it's spelled out because they didn't allow me to use the number because oh, okay. Twitch is weird. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, I, I remember all this now. Uh, and you know, you still do paid DMing? Yes, I do. We'll have to talk about that next week, too. He's a great DM, guys. Go pay him. Just too much to talk about in one week. We're going to have to we, talk about that well, we, this, we, this year. Yeah, this <laughs> year. We, while, we, while we don't talk about Starfield. I'm we sure we'll it. have a dead month somewhere. Maybe in like... Are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> are you? Like the first week in August. That's I'm going to hedge my bets. All right. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your week month whatever it's june 18th june 17th whenever we recorded this and this will be live on june 20th 2023 we'll see you guys then bye bye